melty. This is the picnic table. I can't sit at it because it's covered in rocks. So what we've got here are a number of specimens that I picked up at an abandoned gold mine. I went for a variety just to see what there is. To me that's quartz. There's pyrites there and there. The brown is of course an iron stain. Look at this one. If I was metal detecting in British Columbia, I understand it's the same thing in Australia. If you're finding wormy quartz like that, you're probably in a good place for nuggets. There's mica. That one is heavy, heavy, heavy. So good variety of rock, none of which sets off my metal detector, so it's not going to have a really high content of metals in it. But it might have something. This is muriatic acid. Is some of these are reactive. That one's not. Let's try that heavy one. Look at that, it foams. Now muriatic by itself will not dissolve gold. Look at that. Let's put that one into a gold pan and I'll tell you what we're going to do. So how about this bad boy? No reaction. Here's another one for us. Bubbling. Okay, I think we have enough. Regular pool grade muriatic acid. So today we're going to see if a few dollars worth of muriatic acid can't help us recover a few cents worth of gold. So what it might in fact do is either break down the structural integrity of these rocks so I can crush them and of course leave behind little bits of grit that I can later pan out. And say hello to my little friend. Well, good morning. This is looking like a toxic soup. So here's what's inside. You can see some pyrite crystals. That looks like quartz, which will not be affected by the muriatic. Massive pyrite. Look at that one. See the pirate crystals up in there? Little cutesies. Let's put them back in. The acid, because it is now warmer, with the sun beating down on it, is starting to really work again. So I'm going to leave this another 24 hours. We'll see what they look like tomorrow. Well, good morning. Let's take a look at these rocks. It has certainly stopped fizzling. Okay, there we are rinsed off. Ever cool. I don't know. What do we do? 
I think we melt these things a little bit more for science. Well, day three, let's see what we got. And there is rinsed. Let's pull these babies out. <laughs> Funny little critters. Some of this is just too chunky. There's a nice piece of quartz. Look at that. Some of it's just too chunky to pan. So I'll introduce you to the jaws of death. There's pyrite up in there. Now the gold can be associated with pyrite. More than likely is. Either beside the pyrite or actually within it. And the way to properly get it out is to heat it to bake the sulfides and then chemically remove it. So I get it. This is not the most efficient, effective, or proper way of doing things. But I think it'll get the job done. The other thing, you know, don't get too excited. The real shiny stuff, when I look through a jeweler's optic, is pyrite. And the pyrite will crush, gold won't crush. But we're getting down to some pretty fine sands now. Okay, so there we go. Notice how some stuff is floating in the top. I think in this case that might be mica, but the problem is gold will do the same thing. The way to get around that is put a little jet dry in the solution to rid us of sur surface tension. So I'll go do that and then we'll pan this out. I'm going to switch to a smaller pan. The other thing I could have done if I'd seen a lot of iron oxides is remove those with a magnet. Oh, almost lost a piece of gold. See that right there?
Holy moly. See that right in there? That's gold. I was expecting to get just really fine stuff. Huh. Let me just take this down just a touch further. So you see that? Those larger flakes there are all gold. And there's some really, really, really fine stuff down in there. The silvery. Could be some silver or platinum in there. Or it might just be pyrites. I don't know. But the gold, I know. And that, for the amount of material I processed, <laughs> and the stupid method I used, that is exceptional. Huh. Well, thank you for watching. <laughs>